50 minutes with Uncle Ra. <laughs> I was singing my little ditty again. 15 minutes with Uncle Ra. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to see you. I had a real mixed bag this week in terms of uh, my week. Some of it started uh, the news not so great. We had a great service on Sunday and then got some terrible news about a friend of mine that um, his life was savagely taken away. And you know, I don't care. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say. But no has a right to take another person's life period that's it so to their family and their friends I want to mention his name but you guys know him and so let's pray for the family and the friends amen yay and then this week I got to go do a, a little visit to some people that were incarcerated, got to share the gospel with them. It's been a good week. And of course, this is Friday. Yeah, I always look forward to Friday. Because Friday is two days away from Sunday. Yeah. But I mean, why do we put so much emphasis and importance on a particular day? Every day should be fun day. Amen. Okay, so I've got a nice story for you. Again, it's up to fables. And this one is called... Uh, can you see that? Not shiny too much. Let me see. The rabbit, the weasel, and the cat. The rabbit, the weasel, and the cat. I tell you, these characters. It's up to fables. Okay, so there's acknowledgement to... Al Esop, he wrote it, I never wrote it, I'm just sharing a story about it. Okay, a rabbit left his home one day for a dinner of clover, but he forgot to latch the door of his house, and while he was gone, a weasel walked in and calmly made himself at home. When the rabbit returned, there was the weasel's nose sticking out of the rabbit's own doorway, sniffing the fine air. The rabbit was quite angry for a rabbit and requested the weasel to move up, but the weasel was perfectly content. He was settled down for good. A wise old cat heard the dispute and offered to settle it. Come close to me, said the cat. I'm very deaf. Put your mouths close to my ears while you tell me the facts. The unsuspecting pair did as they were told, and in an instant, the cat had them both under her claws. No one could deny that the dispute had been definitely settled. And the moral of the story is, the strong are apt to settle questions to their own advantage. <laughs> Sometimes I think about the the legal fraternity, how they settle things and in the end both parties are the losers and somehow they are the winners. Hey? Litigation can go on for months and years and of course both, both legal teams get paid and all the while uh, the two sausages in the middle get eaten away. So I want to tell us some biblical things over here that may be fine with you. Of course, you can't stop me. I'm going to say it anyway. So you know the story where there were these two women. It's in the book of Kings chapter 3. And what had happened, two women each had a child. And somehow the one woman's child died. But while the other one was sleeping, the first one stole the baby and took it on as its own and put the dead one with the mom of the other child. And 
you know that then eventually the, the dispute came to king solomon and you know each one gave their story and anyhow he had to make a decision but not only did he have to make a decision he had to apply wisdom to bring a solution to a very real thing and so i'll read to you from verse 23 and the king said the one says this is my son who lives and your son is the dead one and the other says no but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one then the king said bring me a sword so they brought a sword before the king and the king said divide the living child in two halves give one to one and half to the other then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son and she said oh my lord give the, her the living child and by by no means kill him but the other said let him be neither mine nor yours but divide him so the king answered and said give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him she is his mother and all israel heard of the judgment with the, which the king had rendered and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of god was in him to administer justice now i have a favorite little saying where i ask us what is the difference between inheritance and entitlement you know well so an inheritance is receiving something from someone that you didn't have to work for in other words the other person worked hard saved up or just had lots of and when they passed on it became your inheritance so you got it by virtue of them giving it okay you got that so that's inheritance so here's my other little word entitlement yes there are many many people who feel entitled you know it doesn't matter if it's an organization or a country or a village or something somehow they feel that they are entitled to something that doesn't belong to them but in their minds they want it okay so here's the dictionary's definition 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 <laughs> Sometimes it is divination. Eh? Definition of entitlement. The belief that one has is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. Now there are a host of countries out there, for some reason, once there's been a change of power from one type or style of government, uh, right or wrong, to the new one and suddenly those from the latter feel entitled to privileges because it's my time now it's our time now now we're gonna get you <laughs> you know what i'm saying and instead of learning from the faults of the previous all they do is they rehash it to suit themselves and so they become entitled entitled to work entitled to housing entitled to utilities whatever it is don't want to pay for it and even when they do get it they don't know how to steward it well instead they put the money in their pockets or family's pockets which eventually means it goes back into their pockets true or not true is that a true for, uh, statement or is that a false statement? Mm. And then I thought, well, let's have a typical example. So, I went and looked up the squatters' rights in a country. And this country is, is on the very southern tip of the African continent. That's it for a clue. Let me read this. Landlords need to be aware that the prevention of illegal eviction from an unlawful occupation of lands act 
of 1998 makes it difficult for them to summarily evict tenants who default on their rent and service payments. In essence, the Act says no one may be evicted from their home or have their home demolished without a court order. According to expert legal opinion, it's not up to the landlord to decide when to evict a tenant. He can't just say, I want you out, I'm evicted you. A legal process needs to be followed and will be up to the court to decide what is fair under the circumstances. What a joke! That is an absolute joke. So in other words, somebody has purchased the property and it's in their ownership and they've maintained it and they're doing everything right and somebody can come along because they feel entitled and just take your land and stay there or come move into your home <laughs> and then you have to pay all these legal costs because you're not allowed to evict them. I love the way they put it though. What to say over here? Legal opinion. A legal process needs to be followed. What about the legal rights of the landowner to start off with? So people are moving onto lands and putting up shelters, and people are moving into buildings and refusing to leave because now they had squatters rights. Talk about an upside down world. Yes, everybody's entitled to have accommodation. But if this situation has been created by the powers that be who make promises for them to come down to a certain place or area or province or town or city and say to them, come here and, and you can set up. And there's no provision for accommodation or employment or anything. Because you want the vote. You want the vote. So you, in your mind you think, well, if I can get more of the same like-minded people in the same place, then they will help me get the vote. Nice. Okay, enough of that. So I want to read to you uh, Proverbs 1 verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So often what happens is we find ourselves in a situation and instead of going and seeking for wise counsel, we go to all and sundry with our little story and our little gossip. Oh, oh you know, so-and-so was like this and this is what they did to me. And what do you think? Hey, and then before you know it, they are telling you their opinion and, you know, maybe the same thing happened to them. So they're thinking, oh, here's an opportunity. Mm. I know what I'll do. I'll defame that person and I'll slander that person and I'll do this and I'll say that and I'll get into my little gossip group and we will talk and we will assassinate that person's character. <laughs> So silly, honestly. Ah, so here's another one. Proverbs 12 verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Go to the right people. Go to the right source. Don't just go to... And of course, if you're looking for wise counsel, don't go have your horoscope and... All that other stuff. Oh, you know, I need to find out what the stars are saying to me. That's not wise counsel. That's foolishness. Okay. Go to your witch doctor or your sorcerer or your fortune teller. Or where, you know, wherever you go. Whatever it is that you think that you can get the right information. Always remember there's only two sources of information. Bottom line. A source that comes from God, which is wise counsel, or not. <laughs> I love, I've been watching some of these things, you know, where lawyers answer, ask the 
the witness a question. And they say, no, I just want a yes or no answer. And they go on. And, and, and the guy's like, I want a yes or no. Yes? No. Okay. And then, yeah, Proverbs 13 verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companions of fools will be destroyed. Guys, let me tell you, it is with good sense or that the Bible says this, bad company corrupts good character. Now, I know we all on this little voyage because, you know, I'm so good and I'm so righteous. What will happen is my, my goodness and my kindness and my everything will rub off onto the bad apple and the bad apple will become a good apple. <laughs> no, it won't. No, it won't. So what we do is we convince ourselves, we get into relationships, we get into partnerships, we get into all kinds of things. Like that rabbit who had the weasel come in. And then we can't get rid of the weasel because we've gone into a contract with them or an unholy or soulish covenant. And now we're stuck. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, if you meet somebody and their character is not good for your, where, where you are, morally and all of those things, don't start to go be, you know, into that illusion that, oh, if I try hard enough, that person will change. So if that person's a narcissist, I promise you, you can be as nice as you want, it's not going to happen. If a person has substance abuse, uh, you know, struggles with it, and you can try all you want to, even when you think they stop, they're sneaking around. Mm. Or maybe, or maybe, you know, after they've beaten you two or three times, and then you think, oh, well, you know, I'll just stick it out, because what will happen is eventually they're going to change and my life's going to be different. No, it won't. And I tell you, it's regardless of how long that relationship, because there's sometimes there's a rude awakening at the end of the tunnel. You know, they say, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I, I decided to change that, is there can be a rude awakening at the end of the tunnel. How was that? Did you enjoy that one? Eh? Eh, so cool. Eh? Again, the rabbit, the weasel, and the cat. Be careful where you get your information from. Be careful where you get your counsel from. Other thing is start to renew your mind in terms of entitlement and inheritance. Amen. There you go. So, my boys and girls, have a wonderful Friday evening. Enjoy your weekend off, Saturday recreation time with the family and friends. And, and you know what? Make, make the right choices. And maybe tonight, you've heard something that's going to make you realize, you know what? I'm heading down a rabbit hole and there's probably a, we <laughs> there's a weasel waiting there. And if I escape the weasel, maybe the cat will get me. Amen. So, Sunday is celebration day. You've had a great week. Go share your testimonies. Go share your stories, songs. Pray for each other. Care for each other. Love each other. Mm -hmm. And remember, what's it? If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Uncle Russ signing off until next time. Be blessed. Stay blessed. And go well. Amen.